Come on, lads, give generously. The bread isn't gonna pay for itself, you know. And some of you look like you could eat a loaf or two, so dig deep. Got lots of hungry mouths to feed. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, Peter. God bless you, God bless. Cheers, thanks. Yeah, that should do it. Okay, I'm off to see the baker. Be back in about an hour or so, okay? <laughs> oh dear, it's like taking unleavened bread from a baby. These disciples, I don't know, they're just so gullible. Well, that's two shekels for the baker and three for me. But this is small fry compared to the money I could be making. If only Jesus took his rightful place as the king of the Jews. I've tried talking to him, but he just won't listen. I just can't get through to him. And believe me, I've tried everything. He's got so much potential. He just needs a bit of guidance, that's all. He keeps talking about love and forgiveness. But what we need is a leader, a strong man to take our country back from the oppressive regime of the Romans and self-serving priests, scribes and Pharisees who line their own pockets and exploit the suffering of their own people. Can you imagine what we could do if Jesus rose to the occasion and became our king? We would be unstoppable. I've seen him heal the sick with just a touch, a look, a word. People even touch his clothes and they're made well. I've seen him feed 5,000 men with five small loaves of bread and a couple of fish. Can you imagine if those 5,000 men were 5,000 warriors? We'd never need to bring rations. And if someone gets injured in battle, Jesus would heal them and they could get right back to fighting. He could even turn our water into wine when we celebrate our victories. Yes! <sighs> he says it's not his time and that he's not his world. But I don't get it. Is he here to help us or not? I just think he needs a little nudge for motivation to throw off the Mr. Nice Guy and become what we need him to be, our Commander in Chief. So I've set him up. I had a little word with the priests and told them where they can find him. They paid handsomely for that information. 30 pieces of silver. Nice. He'll be surrounded by the Chief Priest and his soldiers in the Garden of Gethsemane. But when they attempt to catch him, I know he'll rise up and display his true supernatural power. And when he does, I'll be right there by his side. Move over, James. Move over, John. The real second in command is coming. I, I don't understand. I don't get it. How could I get this so wrong? He was in the garden just as I'd planned. But when the soldiers arrived, he didn't defend himself. He just let them arrest him. He just stood there like a sheep. He didn't even say a word as they led him away. He didn't do anything. He even healed the ear of one of the chief priests, the very people that came to arrest him. They took him away and they began to beat him. Then I realized he was never gonna fight back. Not like this anyway. His fight was spiritual, not physical. I couldn't watch. It was just too much. It wasn't supposed to be like this. I went back to the priest. I begged them to let him go. They wouldn't. I even offered to give them back money, the 30 pieces of silver. But they said no, it was enough money. They wouldn't take it. His death, they said, was on my hands. Jesus, why didn't you use your powers? <laughs> I betrayed an innocent man. <laughs> he had authority. The first news I heard of him seemed impossible. He cast out demons, healed the sick with a touch or even just a word. He said, be clean 
and leprosy vanished. Rise up, and a paralytic stands up and walks. I helped to build a synagogue and became very familiar with the scriptures. No one had had power like this since Elisha. And his teachings was even more unbelievable. He claimed to be the Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath directly commanded by God through Moses. And he forgave sins? No one but God can forgive sins. In anyone else, I'd have thought they were insane. But the stories of healings kept coming from people I trusted. And his teaching, there was something different about his teaching. I don't know exactly what was going on, but the more I thought about it, that word, authority, kept repeating itself in my head. Jesus had authority, more authority than any other human. I began believing it, and when he brought my servant back from the edge of death in Capernaum, I knew it. I had no doubt in my heart that Jesus would have mercy. I regret not speaking to him face to face when I had the chance. Instead, I cowardly sent my friends to give him some feeble excuse about coming into my house. But... Even from a distance, I sensed his compassion and I knew he had power and authority. It was as if he saw right into the very chambers of my heart. Jesus deserved reverence. I was in Jerusalem for the Passover when he came. And what we did, laying out palm branches, was right. He deserved that welcome. But then, then, they arrested him. They beat him. They dressed him in purple and shoved that crown of thorns on his head. They made him into a parody of a king and mocked him bowing down to him and pretending to give him reverence. He deserved a crown and he deserved their reverence. Hatred, scorn and spite is all they could find. The one man who deserved a crown of gold, the king of kings on this earth, wore that mockery of a crown instead. I don't understand it. He had the power to stop all this from happening. He had authority over disease and even death. Surely, surely, he had the authority to do something. Why didn't he? How could he have let this happen? Jesus had an authority I don't fully understand. I saw it, and others did too. He should have been put on a throne, but they nailed him to the cross instead. He deserved reverence, but he submitted to mockery and the most shameful death my people can bring. I'm here because I want to understand why. I remember. I, I remember being dazed with confusion and pain, tears blocking my vision and clouding my mind, that non-ceasing mad voices of the crowd, the sound of the hammer hitting those nails still echoing in the air. We were just huddling on the ground at the foot of that terrible cross. Nothing made sense. 
Why, he, the nicest, the gentlest, the most generous man I've ever known, any of us have ever known. Why would they do that to him? Where was God? Wasn't he God? I, I remember drawing close to Mary, his mother. I wanted to comfort her somehow, but uh, I think both of our griefs were too deep and too numbing. My mind could not process anything. My heart was sinking. How could this be the end? Was this the end? Then my confusion was broken by a familiar voice coming off the cross. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. I lifted my eyes and caught once more the tender gaze of now distorted face of my Jesus. Memory of our first meeting flooded my mind. He said then, neither do I condemn you. Whoever is without sin cast the first stone. He was the only one that could. He did it. I distinctly remember the last words of that insanity. It is finished. A strange silence enveloped us all. The earth shook. The sun shut its face as if the whole universe came to a standstill. And we all knew it. The focus of all ages at that very moment zoomed in on us, on him. It is finished. I will never forget that morning day of my life after the darkest Sabbath early morning on the first day of the week before even the dawn broke I made my way to the tomb to anoint his body I had forgotten all about his promise of resurrection we all had all we knew was that the sun of our hope had set that we lost the most precious gift of heaven the prince of life himself our dreams were buried with him in that tomb. I went there with spices and ointments. I dreaded to face the reality again, but I wanted to be near him. Apparently Martha and the others were on their way to the tomb as well. We didn't know how we were going to remove that stone, but it was the very least we could do to honor him in his death. He deserved that much. Suddenly, as I was nearing the place, a glorious light coming from that direction illuminated the whole sky. It was not from the rising sun. Then there was a tremor, much like the one at the cross. I hurried, and I saw that the stone was rolled away, and the tomb was empty. Oh, I wish I had slowed down then. But in my distress, the only thought I had was that they had stolen his body. I ran as fast as I could. I found Peter and John. I told them that our Lord had been taken and I didn't know where to. Then following their footsteps, I traced my way back to the tomb. It was empty. My heart sank once more. I looked again as if I missed something the first time. And, and there, there were two men dressed in shining apparels, sitting right where his body had lain. They asked me why I was weeping. Oh, I was so blinded with grief, I could not see the obvious. They were not mere men. They were heavenly messengers. I thought they were gardeners. I begged them to tell me where they had taken his body so I could give him the barrel he deserved. I would find him another place. I would take care of him. And, and then, his voice halted my frantic pace again. Mary. I knew 
that it wasn't a stranger who was addressing me now. Slowly I turned around and saw right there in front of me the perfect face of my living Redeemer. He was alive. He is alive. Hey Simon, I could think of 100 better things we could be doing with our time on this Sunday morning. Instead, we're stuck here guarding the tomb of a dead man. Uh, I mean, what could they possibly do with a dead body? <laughs> Apparently, they fear that they, his followers would just come and take his body and say he's alive. Yeah, that's what I heard. What is this? The third grade? good riddance to him anyway. He was such a troublemaker. We have no king but Caesar. He mentioned that. Anyway, I guess just a couple hours left to be sure. Thank Jesus for that. <laughs> hey, hey, Simon, do you, do you feel that rumbling? Huh? Oh yeah, look, the rocks, they're kind of rumbling and dancing. Weird. What's, going, What's on? going on? Simon, ha have you seen this before? Beats me, man. Simon, look out! The rock is falling! Yikes! That was a close one! Get away from there! Hey, you! Get away from there! Move! Simon, watch Move out! It. Move it! Where is your victory? Oh, death. Where, where, oh, is, death. Your where, where, where death. is your sting? Oh, where, is is where is your sting? Where is your victory? The sting of death is the power of sin. The sting of 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 power of sin. The Jesus Christ.